Okay, let's take a look at some uh, lab data. This is lab data obtained from the Logger Pro, and this is the beginning time, 0 0.2584 seconds, that the position really started to change. As we can see right here, this has already been taken from Logger Pro and culled out. What we needed to do yet was to take that time of 0 0.2584 where it started to move and kind of turn back time uh, a bit. So over here in uh, column B is a column that we inserted and we put in the expression um, the column A minus that beginning time. In this case it's 0 0.2584 and then for each of the other cells it will have that same basic expression except for it refers to the cell immediately to the left. Now the way we create this, once you create this type of formula, if you click into the cell for example you can just drag down from the corner of the cell and it will copy the formula the whole way down. All right. Uh, this is There's some error that was in this data. I'm just going to delete this. Someone else did put that in there. But based upon this data, now I'm not attesting to the uh, errors that might be involved in the data, I'm just looking at the process. Uh, we take this data and what we can do is actually put it into Desmos. I know we looked before at zunzun.com, but we want to know that there's some other options available. So you can copy this right here for example, you know, control C, copy that, and then put it into Desmos, and I've done that already. I put it into Desmos and I pasted it in and it, here it is right over here. And you can see it appears as a nice little table of data in Desmos. And what I've done is I've basically set up the same type of process that we did in zunzun.com but doing it in Desmos. I set the initial position over here in this case to uh, 0 0.2041536 uh, and that's exactly what's shown up over here in our table. And then I also set the initial velocity which is our linear coefficient uh, b i set that to zero and then i set up the model and i also set some uh, parameters up here for the time over here i set up the model is um, y is going to be based on a plus bx1 plus cx1 squared and i did it over this interval and notice I get this fit statistic right here, this R squared, that's the Pearson's coefficient of determination statistic. And that is what I'm going to be referring to in just a bit. Okay, that's basically, uh, or I might as well tell you right now, that's the uh, agreement uh, between the data and the model. It's basically saying that the model is in uh, 99, or the data is in 99.7%. Uh, percent uh, agreement with the model which is very good. Let's look however at the um, the value for C which according to our uh, kinematics equation let's go look at that C is 6.02 and that's the coefficient of the squared term or the quadratic coefficient 6.02 remember that we're going to go look back at the uh, derivations part of our website in the derivations part, if you look at the uh, time-dependent section, bring this to our attention again. We've seen this many times. Uh, but A times 0.5 is the coefficient of the quadratic term. In other words, the quadratic coefficient is representative of one-half the acceleration. So we're going to go back now to that data drop. So this 6.02 is representative of one half of the acceleration. Now that's a decent amount off from our 4.905 that we'd expect. In fact if we run the percentage uh, difference right down here the percentage difference from 4.905 turns out to be 22.6 percent which is considerable which would mean we would want to redo this experiment to make sure that we get a better result. We want to understand how we got that big of an error as well. Let's go to the write-up uh, and how that would be performed. Uh, in going through these pr uh, processes, we'll learn a lot about experimentation as well as the statistical analysis of the data. 
Um, over here in the kin kinematics part three overview, it says that we're supposed to insert a graph into the graphs page, and we're supposed to uh, follow this list of different steps, uh, and it's going to be based upon our uh, what we did over here, essentially what I've done here in Desmos, you could have also have done in zoomzoom.com. But the important thing is that we can follow this uh, set of steps. So we'd insert a graph into the page, we make a heading called key concepts, and then we would go through and identify different key concepts that are involved. Uh, so what are some of the key concepts? Well, we can go back to our kinematics equations and identify them really quickly. Um, over here, we would have y1. Our y term is representative of our final position. Our a here represents our initial position. Our b represents our initial velocity. And then x represents time. And then over here, c represents one half of our acceleration. And we can take each of those terms and give definitions of them and so forth. Other important concepts that are involved is the idea of a best fit line that goes through the data, also called a trend line or a regression line. In this case, uh, we're trying to fit uh, the data to a quadratic type of function. So that's another concept that we can also describe what a quadratic function is. Uh, we may also choose to describe what this R squared means. It's the Pearson's coefficient of correlation, I mean coefficient of determination, excuse me, and it describes how well the data fits to the model, in this case 99.7 percent agreement, and then um, we could go down and also uh, describe this concept uh, down here where we computed the percentage difference. 22.6 is definitely a high percentage difference uh, and would definitely indicate that we should go back and redo this again. So that's what you would put. You put some descriptions of the key concepts and, and write them out in your web page. Uh, write some paragraphs about them. And then uh, make a listing of the experimental variables under a heading experimental variables. Now, what are the experimental variables involved here? Well, let's go over and uh, take a look. The experimental variables involved in this particular experiment are the independent uh, variable, which is time. Okay, that's our x. And then the um, dependent variable, this is our position, our final position. Um, the things that we want to uh, hold uh, constant or well, we basically want to control uh, the initial velocity. We want to hold the object, in this case a basketball, still before we release it. Okay, over here, see how much different the model is if I don't have it at zero. See, I'm over here messing with the initial velocity value, which is the, in this case, the, the B coefficient. So those are important uh, variables. So control, in this case, will be the initial velocity. Uh, and then the independent variable is the time. And then the dependent variable is the final position. Okay, so let's go back over here to the kinematics part three discussion of the uh, write-up. Down here it's saying make a heading hypothesis un under which you will put the hypothesis. So what will we hypothesize about this? Well, looking at this uh, equation right here, it's a generalized form of our derivation equation from over here. Uh, we could make a um, hypothesis that we could use our data to find the acceleration as something drops, which is gravitational acceleration. So we might make a hypothesis to the extent that we say that our data uh, will give us a gravitational acceleration value of 4.905 or near that. Okay, and we go through the process and we find out, hey, we're about 20% off or so. That's, that's pretty much. So we would want to go back and clean that up uh, for sure. Okay, and then we want to go through, uh, make a heading and kind of describe what we did, a list of steps and a procedure. We want to make a heading called precision, where we describe the precision. Uh, the precision over here, if you're looking at the data, um, time. Uh, it says over here, time's precise, down here to the um, 0.0646. 
Um, what we like to say with computer data is that time is precise to the millisecond. Uh, so it's going one place beyond that. Um, and then over here for the position, the position over here, realistically, uh, you know, we're pretty much bound to the, you know, about a half of a centimeter uh, precision, uh, maybe a little bit better than half of a centimeter. So all of these uh, digits here would not be indicating um, the true precision that we have. So we want to discuss that a little bit and that's indicated over here in number seven and then we want to make a heading about the model and the theory we're going to identify the model that we're using and defend it so if you go over here here's our model for uniform acceleration where we're looking at the displacement of something over time and we would want to use this because we expect a uniform acceleration we're dropping something uh, and it's just under uh, free fall acceleration which which is earth's gravitational acceleration so this would pertain uh, in our situation. So we would want to defend it in that way. Um, and then next we would take um, make a heading uh, fit to the model or theory under which we'd in insert some type of regression analysis uh, either from zunzun.com or desmos.com. In this case, let's look at the one from desmos.com. Regression analysis in this case is going to talk about, okay, well, here's our line of best fit. Uh, we actually fit A, B, A, and B. Uh, we held them constant. Uh, we held A to the initial position that we had in our data. We set B, our initial velocity, to zero. And C ended up floating and becoming 6.02, um, which end up, ends up being one half of our acceleration that we're looking at, which would become 12.04. Uh, now, how much in agreement is our raw data, our data right here with our model, it actually agrees nicely, 99.7% uh, uh, percent agreement. However, that doesn't necessarily mean that we have an ac accurate um, result in terms of our expectation for the C coefficient to be 4.905. In fact, it's quite far off. So it's important for us to um, discuss the fit of the model as well fit to the model as well to the fit to the theory so the fit to the model is really nice the fit to the theory is not so nice so in that case uh, you know we would probably want to redo it again so we understood it more because our you know if we look back at our percentage difference again percentage difference is like 22.6 percent which is really unacceptable uh, we want to go back and do that again. And then finally, we want to make some conclusions. And our conclusions would be, hey, you know, although we had a nice fit to the model with our data, we did have some uh, really fairly big issues in terms of uh, the accuracy of our fit with the theory. So what we want to do, our conclusion says we want to go back and redo it. Um, and besides redoing it, uh, we want to also maybe uh, hypothesize about some of the errors that we might want to fix uh, to make our redo better. Uh, maybe we want to make sure that our hand is still when we let go of it. We want to watch uh, more closely maybe when we're culling the data to make sure we're not taking away too much data, um, that we are performing the right process when we are uh, kind of pushing the time back and adjusting the time and that needs to be uh, discussed in the conclusion as well. And then we want to add some type of additional chart or table to kind of uh, help add to our um, documentation about our experiment. So that's everything that you would need to put into, into your web page. Uh, you will also have a um, written test on this uh, or it be uh, delivered either written form or via computer and that will happen uh, coming up this uh, Friday. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that and it gave you some insight into the expectation for your uh, write-up for your lab.